Welcome to Fresno State in the virtual realm for our celebration of the creation of the MK Gandhi Center, Inner Peace and Sarvodaya. Thanks to the generous gift of the Ravi and Naina Patel Foundation, this inspiring initiative has become a reality. We are so delighted to have Naina and Ravi and possibly their family and friends joining us this afternoon. Welcome everyone. Through Zoom meetings, phone calls, and Nina's visit to campus in November, we had wonderful conversations and saw the potential for the Patel's vision for the MK Gandhi Center. Fresno State is the perfect place for this new MK Gandhi Center to nur nurture the growth of inner peace and uplift in our students, campus, and community. It is an absolute joy to see Nina and Ravi's dream come to fruition. We first met the Patels last academic year when they were part of a group of over two dozen donors who came together to create our nation's first endowed chair of Jain and Hindu Dharma, now held by Dr. Veena Howard in the Department of Philosophy. Through the MK Gandhi Center, Fresno State will now be able to provide courses, symposia, and other interactive events based on Gandhian principles that will inspire future generations to take good action. And speaking of good action today, we are truly honored to have with us a very special guest speaker, Reverend James Lawson, who has spent a lifetime putting Gandhi's wisdom into action. Thank you, Reverend Lawson, for joining us. And many thanks to the JP and Renu Seti Fund for supporting his keynote address. It is an honor now to introduce our president, Saul Jimenez Sandoval. From the very beginning, he has supported the creation of the MK Gandhi Center with great enthusiasm. All of us are proud that he serves our campus with such a commitment to engendering peace and uplift for everyone. Thank you, President Jimenez Sandoval. Thank you so much, uh, Dean Chapman, and good afternoon to all of you. And thank you to all of our Fresno State colleagues who join us today for this very special event. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Drs. Naina and Ravi Patel and cherished members of our Fresno community to campus. I would also like to extend a special welcome to Reverend James Lawson, who is our featured speaker for this event. We have gathered here to celebrate the Patel's extraordinary generosity and commitment to support Fresno State as we will, and we announce, as we announce the Ravi and Naina Patel Foundation's pledge of $1.5 million to establish the MK Gandhi Center, Inner Peace and Sarvodaya at Fresno State in the Department of Philosophy. The name of the center highlights the vision of Drs. Ravi and Naina Patel and their foundation which focuses on inner peace and sarvodaya, meaning the uplift of all, universal uplift or progress of all. These principles to build peaceful and flourishing individuals and society align with Fresno State's mission to empower our students in their efforts to build a more just and equitable community where we can thrive together. By creating the MK Gandhi Center, the donors have made one of the most significant contributions towards fostering transformative education and creating opportunities for our students at Fresno State. I have had the great pleasure to meet Dr. Ravi and Naina Patel and to express our gratitude to them personally and to acknowledge the visionary work of their foundation and its investments in our students and in our region. Although they live in Bakersfield, we're honored that in their hearts, our Fresno State community is also their own. For Fresno State, Mahatma Gandhi's legacy serves as inspiration for peace and positive social change. In an intentional and focused manner that promotes the greater good of our community. His philosophy of nonviolence changed the course of human history by illuminating a path for lasting and meaningful social change. I'm reminded of this every day as I gaze from my window upon the serenity of Fresno State's Peace Garden, first envisioned and then made reality through the loving effort of Professor Emeritus, Dr. Kapoor, 
a cherished member of our Fresno State community. The leaders honored alongside Gandhi in the Peace Garden, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Jane Adams, and Cesar Chavez were inspired by Gandhi's commitment to the methods of peace and love. It is why this monument is situated centrally within the garden as a steadfast reminder and inspiration to our campus community. His ideals of peace, equity, and sarvodaya are intertwined in the vision and values that drive Fresno State's mission. True to the region, Fresno State is an ecosystem rich in diversity, a diversity of backgrounds, experiences, perspectives that have long fueled our growth and promise greater prosperity as we move together towards a brighter future. But this future requires that we invest in student success, that we broaden our students' intellectual horizons and show them the courageous possibility of a world rooted in equity and built on the foundation of respect for human dignity. Jain and Hindu community members that included Drs. Naina and Ravi Patel, as uh, Dean Chapman mentioned, have supported the initiative of learning diverse traditions. Education in peace, projects of service to others, and programs in developing inner harmony will contribute to our commitment to courageously educate the leaders of tomorrow and equip them with a socially just vision for our whole community. And to lead this effort, I'm happy to announce that we have selected Dr. Veena Rani Howard to serve as the director of the Gandhi Center. She's a professor of religious studies in the Department of Philosophy. She also serves as the endowed chair in Jain and Hindu Dharma. Dr. Howard will direct the center with Gandhi's principles as her guide, principles deeply imbued in and informed by the connections to Jain and Hindu philosophies. Dr. Howard is a leading Gandhi scholar and is beloved by her students. She has published over two dozen peer reviewed articles and book chapters in Gandhi studies and religions of India, including an Oxford bibliography on Gandhi. She is currently working on her second book on Gandhi and has been a feature speaker at various international and national conferences. Because of her strong background in Gandhi studies and associated Indian languages, as well as her leadership skills and vision, Dr. Howard is uniquely qualified for this position. I have known her for many years since I served as the Dean of Arts and Humanities and have worked on various projects with her, including organizing the 2019 Gandhi's Global Legacy Conference at Fresno State, guided by her expertise and deep commitment to student and community engagement. Dr. Howard will lead us in building Gandhi studies and launching the MK Gandhi Center at Fresno State in full alignment with the Ravi and Naina Patel Foundation's mission. And now it is my honor to introduce the Reverend James M. Lawson, who is a longtime supporter and friend of Fresno State. Reverend Lawson, it is truly wonderful to see you again. As most of you know, Reverend Lawson's work in civil rights and other peace and equality initiatives is both legendary and exemplary. During the 1960s civil rights era, he worked with Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., among others, to end oppression and racial injustice. He also worked alongside Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and many others to effect long lasting change here in our Central Valley. It is commendable that his major strategic work involved college students students who were ready to sacrifice their comforts and even their lives sometimes for the cause of human dignity and equality. He has been a great inspiration for our students at Fresno State and to me personally. I invite Reverend Lawson to share a few words with us. Please join me in welcoming Reverend Lawson to Fresno State. Thank you so much, Dr. Sandoval. And I am excited by in being here for this uh, most impressive and significant event. I want to express my appreciation to Dr. Ravi Patel and Naidu Patel for their gift um, for the MK uh, Gandhi Center 
express also my appreciation for the initiatives taken by Professor Vina Howard in making this happen. Uh, I think it's uh, 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 one of the most significant things that can happen in a university, I think, today is for a university to, to examine the possibility of a region and dimension of study that has Mohandas K. Gandhi at its center. The world desperately needs the intervention that Gandhi made in the 20th century for our knowledge and for world uh, uplift. And let me just say, make a few remarks about it. I need to pay attention to the clock because I don't want to speak over my time. Uh, how do I begin? Well, I'm going to begin simply by saying that I met Gandhi uh, heart to heart, mind to mind, in 1947, when I picked up his autobiography uh, and read it through and through. He, this immediately impacted my life because out of my background uh, as a follower of Jesus and my, the, the work of my parents and family, uh, I was trying to practice the ethics of Jesus in relationship to racism. Um, a, a point that I began to make around age eight under the tutelage of my mother. Uh, hearing very clearly my mother's mantra that evil cannot be overcome by evil. that racist epithets which I met in the streets and parks of Maslin, Ohio uh, at age four <laughs> could not be transformed by imitation. <laughs> imitation did no good. It was one of her favorite phrases to some of us in, uh, in the family. Imitation of the wrong does no good. And I was practicing, therefore, experimenting. Gandhi's book, uh, Gandhi's autobiography, convinced me beyond a shadow of doubt that, in fact, what I was doing was trying to develop nonviolent struggle nonviolent understanding, nonviolent li life. And that in fact, he was given me the keys to how we could begin the, begin the process of confronting a terribly segregated society with laws <laughs> and structures <laughs> and uh, theoretical um, ideas that were all evil <laughs> with signs on so many public places, signs including in California, like in the 60s, there was a no Jew sign on the outskirts of uh, Glendale. Hmm. In San Clemente, there was a no Negro sign allowed after sunset. Uh, at the at the board uh, at the city city limits, there were no chink signs, no Jap signs. People of color could not freely, even in California, walk into a restaurant and have a cup of coffee. In 1942, they had to have sit-ins to begin the process of the desegregation of racism in Los Angeles, of desegregation of restaurants in Los Angeles. Well, the, the Gandhi intervention uh, out of his 50 years experiment 
of how nonviolence, that is an intellectual, a spiritual, a moral, a social science, was the key for changing human life and changing the world. Um, I like uh, fundamentally the fact that nonviolence is not primarily a spiritual force. It is a force of power. Gandhi differed with many would-be um, uh, persons who wanted to uh, create a different society uh, around the world. He differed with them by insisting that goodwill was not enough, love was not enough, that in fact love has in it powers that tap the very power of creation. And that, and Gandhi at some point said that, in fact, if the human race ever discovered how to use the power of creation, what he called the force more powerful, um, that the human fashion would make progress in ways that it had never been imagined. By 1952, from my study of nonviolence around the world and reading of Gandhi, in his work in South Africa and India, I was absolutely convinced that we black people could launch and would launch a master movement that would begin this nation in its goal towards fulfilling its own best visions, which are wonderful visions, but never actuated in 17... Uh, 70, uh, 1787, 1789. The Gandhi intervention into the world of science with nonviolent science is the most important intellectual, spiritual, and moral intervention in the hi history of the 20th century more important than the Albert Einstein interventions of around 1915, 1960 of the equations on relatively, uh, relativity, which uh, have been a major doorway for opening up scientific exploration and, uh, and, sci and the scientific and technology uh, revolutions that are going on. Um, uh, Gandhi not defined nonviolence in a very wonderful conversation with Dr. Howard Thurman uh, uh, in 1936. In that conversation, he said that he translated the ancient ahimsa term from Jainism and translated it as nonviolence. Uh, and in that translation, he was saying and said that nonviolence means therefore love in practice and action, love shaping the way one lives, love shaping the way a society uh, and forms its own structures. Uh, uh, it is in that sense then that I maintain my country owes much to Gandhi because the movement of nonviolence from 1953 to 1973 began the process of opening up our nation to truth and justice. <laughs> Many of you may know how some white supremacy groups have said in recent months, we were a white country. <laughs> now we see all these immigrants. Well, how wrong they were. We would, this land only had a kind of a autonomous people before 
1492. Uh, the native people who were here for some 12,000 years and hundreds and thousands of tribes. Uh, the settlers, the Spanish explorers in the 15th century uh, and all began um, the consciousness in Europe, especially that here was a huge country with very small population as over against the uh, uh, almost uh, the, the, the terrible cities of Europe <laughs> in, in their lack of sanity and in their crowdedness and with all the land belonging to the monarchy and to the um, uh, to royalty and the aristocracy. As that happened, it then, of course, uh, this land became the major settlement of millions of people from Ireland, and from Germany, and from England, and France, and from Sweden, and Norway, and from Poland, and Yugoslavia. Uh, the point uh, I would make with this is that the land was never a white land. Mm -hmm. It took the nonviolent struggle to pull down the signs, begin to challenge the racist structures, the white supremacy presuppositions, and to cause our nation to begin to look seriously at uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Uh, so the country has for 500, 600 years uh, been a country with multitudes of black people, tens of thousands, if not millions of folk from Mexico who were in Texas and California and Colorado and Oklahoma, with the slaves who began, who brought with brought here in shackles in 1619, with Chinese who were imported here as early as the 18th century, um, current tensions in our nation are a direct consequence of that great movement which, which launched the nation's effort to fulfill the promises of its own historical documents. Nonviolent as a science, as a way of transforming personal life and political life was the key structure in that great movement for which Martin Luther King Jr is our wonderful icon. This center allows Gandhian thought and presuppositions and the Gandhian ex experiment to become subject matter for students in the future. It allows students to see that the earth does have uh, the premises, the philosophy, the tactics, the principles, which can allow uh, the, our nation and the entire world to be lifted to new dimensions of truth, of the spirit, of art, of music, of especially of politics and economic order. I congratulate Fresno State for receiving this center. You are one of the, uh, you are one probably, in fact, I think Fresno State's Gandhi Center is the first center in a university so named in the United States. The Gandhi courses, in many places and have been for quite some time. But a Gandhi center means that as a part of the academic, academic work, Gandhian philosophy, experimentation, 
his great campaigns that produce change, his tactics which call for the uplift of society and for ordinary people organizing alternative structures that can help folk move in freedom and dignity uh, is an essential ingredient in my mind for any a learned person. I congratulate Fresno State and Dr. Sandoval and all of the folk who have allowed Fresno State to be the first. Mm -hmm. And may it be the beginning of the Academy recognizing the Gandhian intervention of the 20th century of the science of nonviolence, the most, inter the most significant intervention of the 20th century and the one most urgently needed by all of us of the human race, if we expect our living species to live and to flourish, I wish the center uh, uh, every good wish as you launch your life uh, at Fresno State. Thank you. Oh, Reverend Lawson, we are so grateful to you yeah. for sharing such inspiring words, words of conviction in the force of nonviolence. And your wisdom makes me feel always uplifted and hopeful. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad many of my students and colleagues from different places from all over the world are joining in. Mm -hmm. So we are um, blessed to have your presence at this an announcement. I really is a blessing um, in many ways and um, on this historic uh, initiative. Uh, you have always emphasized the importance of integrating the study of Gandhi and the science of nonviolence as you term it into higher education. And doctors Nana and Ravi Patel and their foundation have also had a similar aspiration that focuses on positive nonviolence and their work promotes uplift of all, inner peace and transformation. Hence this initiative at Fresno State. And we'll continue to build on your message, Dr. Lawson, and on the teachings of Gandhi. So I really feel honored and humbled to have the support of our president, Heminus Sandoval. And I'm grateful for this exciting opportunity to serve as the director of the MK Gandhi Center. As we move forward in building programming and curricula, I will certainly consult Ravon Lawson among all other colleagues as well who continue, and Ramon Lawson continues to teach at UCLA and CSU Northridge. Maybe some of you probably didn't know that. So now it's my honor to invite my esteemed colleague and the chair of our Department of Philosophy, Dr. Robert Maldonado. He has been an enthusiastic supporter of the project along with my department colleagues, Dr. Maldonado. Thank you. I want to express my gratitude to the doctors Nina and Ravi Patel for their inspiring vision and gift. It's inspiring not only because of Gandhi's legacy and ongoing influence on social justice and peace movements, but because the MK Gandhi Center's scope, which extends to the broader Central Valley and beyond. This also connects nicely to the motto of Fresno State, receive the light so that you may give it forth. The center will have direct impact on student learning and practice, not only through its various programs and activities, but also by its deep and organic connections with the philosophy department. There are direct and central connections with the Peace and Conflict Studies program, whose courses will be greatly enhanced by the center, but also with the philosophy major and its option, options including religious studies, as well as the social justice and social change certificate also housed in the philosophy department. These benefits extend to the entire university and beyond. 
Under the skilled leadership of Dr. Veena Howard, with her scholarly expertise in Gandhi and her Jain and Hindu Dharma vision, I eagerly look forward to what comes next. We are extremely grateful to the Patels for the commitment and opening toward the future that this gift represents. I now invite the doctors Ravi and Naina Patel to say a few words. Thank you both from the depths of my heart. Good afternoon. I'm honored to be here today in presence of great dignitaries like Reverend Lawson. First of all, I want to thank the universe for giving us this opportunity to take part in a noble endeavor. I have always had great reverence for Mahatma Gandhi. As a child, I learned from my father, who was not a typical Gandhian. He never joined the freedom movement, nor did he wear uh, khadi, but he followed Gandhiji's teachings in his own way. Especially, uh, he focused on inner transformation, be the change, and sarvo there, lift upliftment of all. Then when I moved to Bakersfield, I joined the Gandhi Interfaith Conference Committee, started by Dr. Hansa Patel 25 years ago. This work inspired me to study Gandhiji's teachings in depth. What I understood from my study was that his teachings are built on three pillars of inner transformation, be the change, sarvodaya, upliftment of all, and satyagra, soul force, or love force. While satyagra is well known all around the world, very little attention has been paid to inner transformation and sarvodaya, which are equally, if not more important. During the protests in the summer of 2020, we realized that even though the cause was just, the methods to support it were not as effective or as long lasting as they could have been. In my humble opinion, one of the reasons was that, that much of it lacked the principles of inner purity and service to humanity that, was, that Gandhiji saw as a prerequisite to systemic change. Gandhiji prepared 78 ashramites for 15 years before embarking on the famous salt march. The members had to keep 11 vows, which helped them attain inner purity and had to serve the community with constructive programs to develop understanding and empathy for their needs. This soul force was responsible for the huge success of the Salt March, which commanded the attention of the British Empire and the whole world. This led to the desire for establishing an MK Gandhi Center for inner peace and Sarvode. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, I actually was born in South Africa, Johannesburg. So I experienced uh, uh, what racial discrimination was uh, as I was growing up, actually, because as I was growing up, it was happening right in front of my eyes. And uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, at that time, uh, the beginnings of Mahatma Gandhi uh, in a very good way was started in Johannesburg. And they established one of the first beautiful statues of Mahatma Gandhi right in the center of Johannesburg where I grew up. So uh, the values of Mahatma Gandhi resonated very well with me at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was just uh, amazing to see uh, that people were moving back to Mahatma Gandhi. As I was growing up there, literally, there were people who were tortured discriminated, put into jail for just not being whites. And, uh, and then uh, years later, we took our children back to South Africa. And it was amazing to see that uh, an individual like Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela 
two Nobel Prize winners lived on the same street. It was amazing to see that two beautiful people who transformed all of South Africa lived in the same street. And uh, I actually went with the children uh, where uh, Nelson Mandela was mm -hmm. uh, kept in this little prison where you could hardly put an entire human being to rest and sleep in a comfortable way. And he was kept there for years and years. And uh, he came out of there with no hatred. Mm. So it's amazing to see that, you know, how these teachings of Gandhi can transform individuals to the extent that they have no hatred for no matter what is done, but total love and acceptance. So it was very beautiful to see that. And then uh, after finishing in South Africa, actually I got into medical school in uh, India because I was a South African, surprisingly. And that's where I met Naina. So uh, we spent time there. And uh, at that particular time, uh, we really recognized that uh, and felt that the teachings of Gandhiji needs to be promoted further and further out to the world. And so, uh, lo and behold, we landed up in the Central Valley after finishing in South Africa. And uh, uh, as we were growing up and doing work in the Central Valley, we came to hear about that famous Fresno State University, doing all the good work there, just north of us. And, uh, and we heard about uh, Dr. Sudarshan Kapoor and Fresno University being pioneers in starting the uh, establishing the Mahatma Gandhi statue and the Peace Garden. And, and that sort of started resonating with us. And then, uh, of course, Naina started organizing the Gandhian conferences in Bakersfield. And we got the first-hand opportunity to meet such a beautiful, talented individual like Dr. Veena Howard, you know, and she did such a great job with uh, sharing her thoughts and ideas on Mahatma Gandhi. And, uh, and then, lo and behold, we were very happy to hear that she was the chair for the Hindu and Jain studies now there. And uh, we felt that who else could be a better steward of uh, managing this uh, uh, Gandhi uh, Center at Fresno. So we're very excited that uh, we get a chance to participate in this uh, uh, you know, partnership for hopefully transforming the students and many lives and under the enlightened leadership of uh, such a great faculty, you know, uh, Dean Chapman, uh, President Jimenez and uh, the Provost Fu. And, uh, you know, it's beautiful to see that all of you have embraced this idea and are giving us traction to make this uh, happen. Of course, I do want to thank Munja who was driven crazy by us many times to change this document, and that document, but she was patient and agreed to uh, work with us. And uh, we're so happy that uh, all of you have supported us in making this happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm so glad to have uh, Reverend James Lawson join us and uh, share his beautiful uh, history and speech with us. So thank you all. We look forward to, to a great partnership and we hope many Gandhis emerge from this. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to give this uh, brief closing remark. I would like to give my heartfelt gratitude to doctors uh, Naina and Ravi Patel for their generous gift and their vision for the NK Gandhi Center. And I thank Reverend Larson for his inspiring words. I have heard him several times. Every time is a, a lifelong lesson I feel I received. And we are grateful to doc Drs. Patel support for Fresno State and our community at large. As President Hamini Sandoval eloquently expressed, Fresno State and our valley is the perfect place for expanding the study of Gandhi's ideas of equity, diversity, 
inner transformation and uplift fall. These are the core principles of this institution. We are excited by the leadership of Dr. Howard, who is taking up as the director of the NK Gandhi Center and in, in her upcoming programming of the Gandhi Center. Her visions and strategic plans include creating interdisciplinary projects with various departments and programs throughout the university and outreach and education to our communities locally and globally. I'm confident that the NK Gandhi Center will help enhance our curriculums on this campus and our lives in every corner of our university and beyond. Thank you all for attending this exciting event today. And we welcome and expect you to visit us in person in near future so we can all work together to build the NK Gandhi Center. Thank you. <laughs>